Welcome back. This is America's Commercial Real Estate Show, and I'm Michael Bull. Today we're talking about technology for your space. This segment is brought to you by Valuate. Easily share investment analysis with colleagues online to do what-if analysis. Visit GetEvaluate.com. My guest is Chad Curry. Chad is Managing Director with the Center for Realtor Technology with the National Association of Realtors. He's joining us on Skype. And so let's talk about aquaponics. What is aquaponics and how might we use that in our commercial space? Uh, it's a great, yeah, that's a very exciting one. Uh, you know, all new technology is old technology in some ways, right? Uh, so aquaponics, the, the concept behind it are that you have uh, uh, a green space or plants and the plants are fertilized uh, naturally. And how they're fertilized is you have a fish tank with fish in it. Uh, The fish create waste, the waste is pumped up into the bed where the plants are, and the plants take the waste and and convert it to nutrients and then filter that water so the water then goes back down in the tank. And what you have is a natural filtration system that keeps the uh, the tank performing optimally. Um, And we believe that in the future, as we look to add more green space indoors, to help with the mitigation of air quality issues, to help uh, with the feeling of people indoors, aquaponics is going to become something uh, pretty large. Now, there are a number of companies already um, adopting aquaponic uh, systems in in, uh, the commercial space. Uh, There's also a a large movement uh, in the residential space, and we actually have um, uh, an aquaponic system, a couple of them in the lab actually, where we're testing out uh, these different systems and putting our own sensors on them so we can give a whole holistic picture of how the building's performing. Um, what I believe in commercial is uh, there are plants that can be used to help filter the air from things like I was talking about with VOCs, the, the volatile organic compounds, which are things like formaldehyde, benzene, ammonia, xylene, uh, trichloroethylene. Uh, these things can be filtered out with plants. NASA actually did a study in 1989 to find plants to help filter out those chemicals because the way we're anticipating when they go to Mars or other places, uh, they want to have a way to naturally filter the air in case they, they don't want their air filtration system to break or be overloaded uh, with, with that, t- that type of thing. And we're actually, one of the things we're working on is a plant book to identify the plants that actually do this uh, for commercial spaces. And that'll be out in a little bit. It's like a, it's like a little uh, field guide, kind of a pamphlet sort of thing that commercial practitioners can take and learn about the plants and how they're used in the building. And, and here in Chicago, the, um, the company who takes care of our building here in Chicago, they knew about the study, and they actually had the plants on our floors uh, as part of that. And so with the aquaponic system, what we think could happen is those plants could be integrated into that and, and, and take care of themselves uh, with uh, this, uh, this, this symbiotic system. Um, now, the thing um, about the plants that you would have in the buildings, and from the aquaponics perspective too, is that natural light isn't as as needed um, for these plants because they tend to come from subtropical areas and uh, they're they're underneath that large canopy uh, of trees. So they had to learn how to survive without a lot of light. So it's perfect for an office space. You know that's interesting, and I think uh, you know some of the states have figured out that the right plants, uh, like Colorado, right? <laughs> and so, see, can you show me yeah. the the test <laughs> the test you're doing there? Yeah, absolutely. So um, you're gonna have to pardon us because uh, some of the um, some of the plants are still uh, uh, maturing here. But let me give you a sense of it here. This is actually a system that we um, are using from a company called Grove Labs, and you can see down there. Um, there's the fish tank, and we have our fish in there, some goldfish, and the water is being filtered up here into this bed, and this bed uh, has radishes we're growing right now, so we're testing out some radishes, and the light actually is adjustable, so this light uh, will adjust, and it learns about uh, the types of plants we have in here, and will change over time, so it gets the right type of light into that, into that system. Um, we also have a smaller system that we've been testing over here, um, where we're actually uh, testing our own equipment um, on this one. This is actually an interface for some equipment that we're, uh, we're testing with uh, the oxidization of the water, the pH levels, and the temperature and humidity as we grow these plants. And we have a stop motion camera here so we can watch the plants grow over time and figure out what the optimal levels are for everything. And this is a much smaller tank if somebody wanted to have this in their office just to have something 
Uh, this I, goes for uh, $140. So it's a very inexpensive system that someone could have in their office and have some have some actual natural uh, things to interact with. So how, it's a pretty, how, pretty exciting area. How large of a system would you need to, to make a difference in a commercial office space? Well, depending on the space. Um, so with the plants, uh, well, actually, there are systems that go uh, uh, about a story uh, with plant beds uh, all throughout, and the air is filtered through those. Um, and uh, it, it, it really depends on the space. So for this room, um, what we've got there would be adequate uh, to have those plants in. It would actually work for this room. Okay. So that's why you look so healthy then, right? <laughs> <laughs> is that right? Thank you, Michael. I appreciate, tell that to my wife, please. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I uh, I can order whatever I want at lunch when my wife's not around. So you, if you don't tell her what we have at lunch uh, when I'm in Chicago in November, <laughs> and if right. and, and if you are a realtor, uh, try to to be in Chicago with the National Association of Realtors uh, conference there. You can see some of these these things uh, in person. And let's talk about responsive office space, what's that mean for the office occupier moving forward? Yeah, so uh, there's a movement happening with responsive space. And, and what I mean by that are convertible desks that move uh, uh, around the office and more open uh, 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 workspaces. Uh, now, there's, there's, uh, there's a lot of movement toward this area. And by the responsive space, uh, what we mean are office uh, uh, meeting spaces. So conference rooms that expand or contract based on the number of occupants. Um, and uh, this has been happening a lot in Germany, and it's coming to the U.S. Uh, where these spaces respond. And they also are tied in very much to um, uh, the sensing that's happening uh, that I was talking about earlier. Uh, but there's, there's a space in, um, in the Netherlands um, called The Edge uh, that um, uh, Deloitte actually set up, where there are 2,000 employees in the building, and there are a total of 1,000 seats and a few offices. And you can move air walls or um, uh, other components within, the, within those offices to create larger and smaller spaces and contract. Uh, the, the, thing about, the thing about these responsive spaces is they really align with LEED certification as well. Uh, they allow for the adaptive reuse in the future. Uh, they allow for you to be more flexible when you're listing a commercial property. Um, so that's that's really a movement uh, that's that's taking a lot of uh, a lot of hold, um, uh, especially with uh, lead certification coming online and the well certification coming online. Yeah, and let's talk about the well certification for a moment. You know, how many buildings, yeah. how many spaces have that? How much do you have to to do and spend to get that type of certification? Yeah. So the, the thing about the well certification uh, is it's it's new within the last couple of years, right? So it's kind of like where LEED was early 2000s, um, but uh, it's one that is taking, it's getting a lot of press, it's getting a lot of, of coverage um, in, uh, in uh, the commercial space um, with respect to uh, what it means for uh, the, the health of the occupants. I mean, a lot of studies happening on this. Um, it does cost a, a little bit to do. Uh, I don't know the exact cost that Iron went through, um, but, uh, but there is the retrofit of the lighting system. Uh, you have to, char uh, charcoal air quality filters, uh, to have that in an open space, uh, for the occupants to, to congregate, meaning a kitchen that's open and can be converted into a conference room if it needs to be. Um, uh, the cubicles themselves, they opted for lower ones up there to allow more natural light in. So really it's more of a change of mind. Uh, the costs, I don't believe, uh, I don't have any numbers on those uh, yet, but I, I do want to get those um, um, soon. Uh, yeah. But I think that, you know, it's one of those things where that's, that's nascent, but I think it's going to, it, it, it's showing to be uh, uh, one of those things people are, are interested in. Yeah, and when you look at the increased productivity uh, of the people in the space, well, it will certainly make right. sense. And we're going to take a short break when we get back. I'm going to ask Chad about some tips. If you own a building or you run a company and you have people in your space, uh, what you might think about today and some sources for some more information. So stay with us. I'm Michael Bull. This is America's Commercial Real Estate Show. We'll be right back. Hey there, thanks for checking out the Commercial Real Estate Show. Don't miss a video of special interest to you. Be sure to subscribe below. 
And if you appreciate the videos, be sure and thank our sponsors. There's a link to more information about them in the description. For more videos, podcasts, and articles, check out CREshow.com.